Now let's look at the, the executive summary, the equation version of Faraday's law. Okay, so Faraday's law again, and I'll use the symbol, the curly E for EMF. This is the EMF induced around the loop, and it's proportional to the number of loops in the wire, so that's big N. So in, in my little coil here, I remember I counted five, so then would be five. And then the time rate of change of magnetic flux, so d by dt of phi sub b is magnetic flux, and the minus sign is the opposite direction. Now that minus sign goes into the equation, but that just gives you an algebraic, a negative number, and it doesn't really tell you anything. Um, the minus sign is what we set up here in direction uh, for Lenz's law. So the minus, the minus sign is Lenz's law. N is the number of windings. And you can see sort of why it would be proportional to, or should be proportional to n. We're going to test that. If you think of going around one loop of wire and coming to the next one, and then going around the next one, those two loops are in series. So it's just like putting two batteries in series and the voltages add. Here you've got a loop with an EMF around the loop, and then you've got another loop with an EMF around the loop, and you're connecting them in series, so they should add. And if you've got five of them in series, it's like having five batteries in series. The EMFs should add, so you would multiply. And they all have the same change in flux. The flux, magnetic flux, technically it's the sum of the magnetic field going through the, an area, magnetic field B, dot product with dA, so that this is the differential of area, and the dot product means we only get that part of the magnetic field that's perpendicular to the area, because in fact dA is also chosen perpendicular. It's a little increment, little, little element of area, but the direction is perpendicular to the area. That's the only thing that makes sense for a direction for area, mathematically. And then we sum this up over the whole area. You'll get practice doing this in, uh, in, in homework or lecture class. But a special case that makes this easier to remember is that for constant magnetic field and area, it's just, it's just B dot A. So this allows for the change, the, the, area, the, the area could change, the magnetic field might change, but if these are all constants, then it's just how much magnetic field sticks through the area. And that's the flux. And then, but it's not how much flux there is, it's the rate of change, the time rate of change of flux. It's, that's, uh, you could have lots and lots of flux, but if it's not changing, Faraday's law says no EMF. Okay, so we're going to test this equation. That's going to be the goal of our experiments.